speed and utilities can help your organization to convert the energy it uses every day into a more sustainable source of supply. We are a professional, totally independent, but friendly utility consultancy that can offer any organization a way of converting its own waste into energy. This provides a number of beneficial rewards. So, if you already recycle items like plastics and paper, you could now use the rest of the waste your business creates to generate power for use back into your organization. If you don't do any recycling yet, you could start now, without the need for any additional effort or large investment in time or cash to accommodate the initiative. Our Eden Infinity product provides your business with a way of not only helping the planet, but also saving you money. Your business creates waste. That waste is collected, and then we work with your energy supplier to ensure that the power generated from your waste is used to supply electricity back to you. In doing something like this, along with doing your bit to help save the planet and meeting your business's green targets, it provides great PR for your organization, sending a very positive message to your suppliers, clients, and stakeholders. It's something to be very proud of. At Eden Utilities, we pride ourselves on being unique with our continuous innovation, along with our ethos of providing a fully transparent pricing model to all our clients. Our personable approach means we always work with you to find the best for you. We regard ourselves as an extension of your business, a partner. Eden Utilities, your sustainability partner. Hello, bud. It was the night before Christmas on talk of the town. The lads are all here, pet. There's no need to frown. As we look back on the year, we welcome back old John. All right, son. Welcome back. It's our Christmas special. It's only episode 21. Get in there!
take a look back at the year of 2020, looking at some of the highlights on the pitch and discussing some of the topics that have been going on off the pitch over the last year. I'm joined to go through 2020 with an illustrious panel. We've got Ben, the groundsman, Tom, the general manager, technical director, Erdem Konya, the gaffer, John Yems, and I don't really know what he does, but he does it well, Ken Blackmore. <laughs> Gents, thank you very much for joining me. <laughs> you like that little introduction, yeah, do you, Ken? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for that, Joe. <laughs> Ken's Brilliant. trying to work out the, the mic, aren't you, Ken? You have to put it to yeah. your mouth, otherwise it won't work. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, fantastic. Um, on, what, let, let's just let's get started. Let's get started. What we're going to do, uh, actually, technically 2019, but we're going to start at Boxing Day last year. So, um, obviously, John, you'd been at the club not very long, less, less than a month by that point. Um, I mean, you, your first game was obviously with Stevenage on the 7th of December. Yeah. Um, so we'd kicked off with, with, with two draws uh, and, and then a loss away at Oldham. And then obviously, let's have a look at the, the first win you got under your belt at home to Northampton. <laughs> mentioned before that, that that was the first win under your belt how important is it as a manager to to get that first win and, and get up and running especially in that fashion against a side like Northampton it's very important uh, when you think that the banners I think was already being made if you haven't <laughs> won a game already but bed sheets <laughs> bed sheets yeah, bed sheets, yeah. <laughs> but no of course it's to, it's to get everybody to get the belief back in the, into the club and into the uh, new team so to speak it's funny how many of them boys are not here anymore yeah yeah um, so yeah, it shows you. It don't seem like a year ago. It seems like twelve months. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, thought, I sort of found myself nodding, going, "Yeah, yeah, twelve months." Um, and and Odom, sort of, we we went into we we got a draw away at Grimsby. I think I, I remember going to Grimsby on the on the twenty ninth, absolutely freezing. And then um, then we we played Colchester on the opening day. Going into twenty twenty. Um, obviously, we just had a change of manager. What, what were your hopes for, for the year, if you can think back to sort of the start of 2020? To be honest with you, that, that game we just watched there was a massive turning point for me, personally, because uh, I remember when I was with the gaffer, when he just came in and I, I was in a bad place in the sense you're, you're looking at yourself going, what's wrong? Because all the managers have changed. You can't not be accountable for what's going on on the football side. So you're looking at yourself and after the first three games, I remember going to a pre-Christmas party and all my friends and they were like what do you do and I, I think I'm at Crawley because <laughs> in a way you're you're questioning what you're doing and to, to be fair that game was the beginning of where we are today and even the way we're playing there even though then the gaffer says it's a, the, the personnel were different but even the way we play today our gameplay the way like the intensity it was a it's the same as it is today and it's actually developed since then that we're playing a much better brand of football and I think that and that's a massive testament to everyone that's been here on and off the pitch because it was a chaotic time for the club and thank God for where we are today, you know, and especially for myself as well, thank God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll have a chat whilst we look at the, the game on, on, um, on, on New Year's Day. Ken, one thing that strikes me over looking at this sort of period here, um, 
there was a lot of tough games. When you, and when you look at the teams we played and look at how they ended up, so obviously their Northampton ended up going up through the playoffs. Uh, we, we then, obviously away to Grimsby, not tough. Colchester um, also got into the playoffs. Forest Green were knocking on the door. Um, sort of tough run of games, but we actually really were, we were picking up points, weren't we? That's right, we were, Joe. And, you know, when we play them sort of teams, Northampton Town, obviously a big team in our league, obviously ended up winning the playoffs, didn't they, and going up to League One. So, um, yeah, it was, a, it was really good. I mean, John had obviously got the team playing the right sort of football to match them teams that we were playing. And we might, six months before, we might not have matched those teams like we did. Yeah, and, and like, we'll bring, it, bring in Tom. Uh, we're also going to have a look here. At another big team we talked about was, was Bradford, um, who, who we also went. And that, that meant four games un, unbeaten uh, at this point, Tom. Like, could, could you feel a bit of a buzz around the club and sort of turning? I think, yeah, you probably say Ty's turning. Pitch isn't good, Nick. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah we, only, we only bought Ben, so we can take the mic out. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, it's always important to have a, a good festive period anyway. So, yeah, coming out the other side of that, yeah, you did feel that we were gaining uh, a bit of momentum. Ollie getting his goals and... Yeah, it was. I think you were right. Yeah, it's probably the start of what Erdem's alluded to, what Ken alluded to, the, the start of where we are now. And, and I, I think that you, you touched upon it there. It, it was funny. Um, obviously, Oli Palmer, Oli Palmer's gone now, but he, he very much went through stages of scoring in, in his time here. He would go on a run of a month or two, scoring loads of goals, and then maybe wouldn't wouldn't do a lot for a month or two, and then he'd go on another hot streak. I remember around that at that time. A bit like at Wimbledon now. Yeah. Oh, what do you do? Oh. <laughs> Um, New Joey, but yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> but he was on a real hot streak, wasn't he? In that, in that sort of gallery, and, 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 and I remember him and Ashley Naderton seemed to strike up a partnership, and, and they were scoring a lot of goals in that period. Yeah, no, they he done well for us when he was here. Ollie he worked hard, um, but it's different. It's, it's funny now because it's the difference of expectations of people. Because you just said there we went four and four four games four without being beaten. Yeah. yeah. Well, we've gone six unbeaten now and people are still moaning. So I suppose it's, <laughs> it's the way that the year goes, isn't it? Well, I, mean, I, I, I was just looking at this. From, from when you came in, and, and I didn't even notice this until I was sort of looking at it last night. From when you came in, the 0-0 draw away at Stevenage to the last game of the season, which, which ended up being the 7th of March, we only actually lost three games. Um, and uh, That's sort of un underrated, I think, a little bit. And it goes a little bit under the radar that we, we weren't losing ga many games at all for sort of from when you came in right up until the end of the season? No, I totally agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I no, think the you've thing got is, The thing is, you set, you set your standards and there's certain principles that you sort of like try and do with all the players. And uh, no, it's just funny how it works out, but they all know that they've got to work hard. They all know they've got to train hard. And then you get picked. As soon as you get picked, try not to lose your shirt. That's the rules. And again, again, this game really, really highlighted the the, sort of the Palmer Nadison combination. I think we were losing in this game at home won. to Grimsby. We were losing, and, and um, that that was a real a real boost. I think coming coming from behind to win. Yeah, that well, game. whatever club you go, it's all about partnerships anyway. Whether it's defensive partnerships, midfield partnerships. If you get your two strikers firing like they were, you know, and, and we weren't conceding at the time at the back. You're going to have a chance, aren't you? And, and our last... <laughs> uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot of clips from January. January was, was a busy month. Um, our last game in January was away at Plymouth. I think... Did you come to Plymouth, Ben? Did you? And, and it was... Um, I, I can remember us sitting there. I think it must have been me, you and Erdem yeah. uh, were sat in the... Uh, the, well, the director's box. But you're in amongst the fans, aren't you, Plymouth? Quite an, quite an intimidating place to go when we were surrounded by people. And then, uh, and then obviously, it, this happened. What, what, what are your memories from, from that night? From, from that night? Well, um, it was a battling performance, wasn't it? We were never out of the game, so that's the main thing whereby we used to be out of games in previous years and stuff like that. We're always in games away from home at the moment, then and now. So that's, that's a positive, I think. Because, I mean, that, that, was, that was literally, I think, the last minute of the game, wasn't it? It was the, the dying minutes when we... Well, I think an important thing to highlight is we've seen Oli scoring all these goals, and yes, he did do a good service, but the fact that Oli's left, Bez has left, and we've scored more, I think, at this stage than last season, so that shows that, you know, the gaffer, I mean, very good recruitment's taking place in the club to replace with new goal scorers with Tom yeah, Nico, yeah. Max Walls. Well, I'm going I'm to so come on to, to looking at yeah, the but recruitment. When you look at, like, you, you said we only lost three games in that season. I mean, a lot of that was attributed to the back four, weren't they? I mean, it, we had a, a fantastic back four. And the players that came into the back four, when anyone got suspended or, or injured, they picked up the, exactly where the other players had left off. 
And, it is, and again, we've gone on with that this season. I think our back four, you know, we, we talk about the players that score with the goals. I think our back four is second to none in this league. And it has been for the last, well, since John came. I could agree with that. And going back to that Plymouth game, we, we should have won as well, shouldn't we? We, we Definitely. Kind of a bit disappointed. We had those chances. Yeah, yeah. only had that one that you should have scored in the first half as well. And, yeah. and again, an- another another team, <coughs> team has gone up. In, uh, have gone up. So you look you look in that period, so at the end of December through, through January, the sides we were playing were like, top sides. We, we did we did lose away at Walsall, but again, difficult place to go. Um, and we shouldn't have lost that really because we were all over them for 70 minutes and then there were two slips at the back or and there was that one weldy when uh, McDonald scores and so it happens but the good thing is that we applied ourselves and we perform in a very good way yeah so yeah and moving into into February uh, first game in February was well, the first was, was at home to Scunthorpe I don't, I don't, tiny header yes that's it yeah 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 how big how big a player is he for us John John Tunnicliffe um yeah, well, I think it was his first year last year as a pro, I think, or in the Football League. Um, but I think now he's got Tony alongside him, uh, who, you know, has been around. They're learning. Everybody's learning up there all the time. That's the point of bringing what you the fans don't see is the stuff that you can learn off the senior players in and around the training pitch. The standard of the training, different ways that you can defend, different shapes, different players to play against. But no, he's been a... Uh, real top lad Jordan to be fair to him he's scoring a couple of goals this year as well yeah um, but no listen you can't fault any of them we, some of the goals we give away this year have been absolutely stupid but at the same token they're all stoppable I, don't, I think the best goal we've had scored against us was at Salford where the fella even though we could have closed him down being critical James but, Wilson yeah, yeah great yeah, goal yeah, wasn't it yeah, yeah. I think that was the only goal that this year you turn around and go well there ain't too much you can do about that I, um, it's not me being too critical, but it is, because it's my job to be critical. We should have stopped most of them that's gone in. Yeah, yeah, well, I suppose you, you'll always look at every goal that's scored. Even that one, you could probably argue that, oh, maybe someone should have closed them down off the top of my head. But yeah, I suppose, that, as you say, that's your job to make sure. Yeah, but I, like I, I just think this year we've been a little bit weak in the, in protecting the back four. But that's because you've got new players come in. It takes a while for people to gel. It takes a while for your partnerships to come up. And uh, some of the games that we, you know, the two games we've lost here was the worst I think we've been. But that happens, and you, it's the way that you react to the defeats. And like I say, we've six on the on the trot now, and you know, the expectations of people sometimes is is not what the expectations of the of the club is. We know the reality of it. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and a few key injuries to the defence as well. Well, well and, and I'm really just going to touch upon it. I think he scored in this game. I've gambled a little bit. Yes, we no, no, we didn't. Found a a, actually, Nadison. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> actually, Nadison, I think, <laughs> scored here. But um, what, one person I wanted to talk about was Reese Grego Cox. He, he, he scored a great goal in, in the clip we just saw against Scunthorpe. Um, and, and he was really firing, I thought, last season. Of like knocking on the door of being one of the one of was the that the game he got injured? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. Yeah, yeah. He, he, that's it. He, he got injured in his game, and, and <clears> a real a real shame because because he was really coming on for me. I thought he was he was having a great season. I should have closed that down. Yeah, no. Yeah, we never really got the um, got the full use of Reese, but he, he's back. You know, he's he, he's up and around the training ground now. He's one of them when he's when he's not playing, you miss him, and when he is playing, you take it for granted. But at the same token, you know, the lads that have come in, the new lads that have come in, they're different sorts of players, but I think they're just as exciting. But no, it was a bit of a disappointment. But then you're getting to know the squad. You know, we'd only been we'd only been in the job, I think, two months with all this going on. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's credit to the lads that they bought into it straight away, really. And, and so, so, as you say, Reese is, is on his way back. He's not far from... Oh, he's, he, he won't be playing this year, but um, he's, he's running in that now. See another silly goal we give away there. Look, one thing, like, um, but but I remember that game we, we, again. Another team who were going to the playoffs uh, this last year uh, in Exeter, and, and we we were good value for that point, and potentially could have got more. Yeah, well, that's what I say. That's the standards you set yourself, and does it show you how far we've come, or does it show you how? how level the league is yeah. it do make you wonder but if you look at all them as well the big difference with all them they had a budget of about twice three times the size of what we've got yeah, yeah. so does money win does money 
win you the league, of course it don't, but it might help if you've got a bit well, more cover on I was it. watching the um, the Salford documentary, Farm, great example of what you were saying, and they were saying there, they're, they're, Gary Neville was there saying our budget is sort of knocking on the door of three million quid, and, and they're sort of mid to lower in the table at that point when you said it, and this is what you're saying, actually money... Money isn't everything, is it, in this league? No, but it helps. Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. It always helps. You think on the commercial side as well, you know that, Joe. Yeah, the more well, money always, you get always. in, the better you are. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. John, have you always, um, in your years of football, it seems since you've been here that you set up differently to who you're playing against, whereby previous managers may have had a philosophy to play the way they want to play, but you seem to set up against who you're playing. So, do you think that's why the away form's kicked on a little bit? Yeah, it's not, it's not only setting up, it's the core principles that you got in there. And once you've set them up as the core principles, i.e. defenders defend and attackers put the ball in the back of the net and the midfielders, you've got to be all over the place. Um, it does help, but when you come up against a bigger size like Cheltenham, who absolutely battered us at their place, if it was purely um, physicality more than everything else, you've just got to learn. You've got to learn. And if we can throw different things against opposition, because it's all right looking at opposition and people are studying this side and studying that so well you forget they're doing the same to us yeah so the more that you can get them thinking and, and throw a few spanners in the works well that's the name of the game it used to be called coaching when i was younger i don't know what it's called now anymore it's probably a new name for it <laughs> <laughs> um last clip we've got from last season i'm going to come to uh to you here adam uh, you'll see why in a second um obviously oldham oldham at home I know, I know you're a big fan of Ricky. He gets it. I think was this his, was this his first goal in the league? Yeah, it was. And I suppose it's a shame, really, that for Rick personally, but also for for the team getting a good win and, and starting to really fire, that the season then get, gets ended after this game. Look, I mean, for me, it, I think the COVID for players like Tarin and Ricky, I think it's been a detriment because they missed out on nine games where they wouldn't have had much pressure and they probably would have played most games. So that it's been a, it would have been invaluable development because a footballer is only going to get better by playing games so since then I don't think Ricky's hit these type of performances even in the clip we saw before Exeter the defender goes rolling but that's down to him he knows he's got a chance he's a very young lad um, I, I still believe he's got qualities that you can't train or quote uh, coach i.e. his strength and so forth but hopefully you know he keeps he, he has to work hard and get consistent and he's got half a chance and I really hope that he is a player that can that can kick on because we need him to kick on. Yeah, and, and, and go on. Well, he, he, scared, he scored goals, didn't he, when he was out on loan? Yeah. Albeit, obviously, the league or two leagues below what, what we play in, and uh, there's no reason why he shouldn't have kicked on from that, is there, really? Yeah, look, at the end of the day, we can't... We, we've been... This year, we've been lucky and blessed in the sense that Max Waters has come in and we've probably seen the yeah. best finisher in my five years here come into the football ground. Yeah. So, you can't have it all. And they're young kids. Like we, are, we do sometimes, not gamble, but we take risks with the youth policy mm. and you know we have to think outside the box but the good thing is here everyone gets a fair crack and if you're not working hard enough uh, that's up to the gaffer but you know you won't feature here and it's everyone you, you got put in a hard work and half charge shift and you got to impress and make sure that everyone else is buying into what you're doing um, and Tom obviously after this game um, I, I can remember we were planning to go to to Port Vale um, Sort of the following Saturday after that, but obviously that didn't happen, and, and that was the end of the season, and it was all about sort of trying to keep, trying to keep the club alive. Yeah, well, it's a, it seems like an absolute eternity. I mean, yeah, it was getting on for what nine months ago now, nine ten months, and yeah, I remember at the time there was sort of all the chat about what was going to happen with the season. I think everyone was expecting this this COVID stuff to go on for maybe a couple of weeks, and yeah, the Port Vale game would have been postponed, but. Here we are again, what, 10 months later and the same conversation just starting to kick up again about is football going to continue? So, yeah, it was um, uncertain times back then and probably about as clear as mud now as well. So <laughs> I was going to say we've moved on a bit, but <laughs> have we? Not yeah. sure. I think as a club, probably have. Definitely. Oh, no, yeah, oh, no, yeah, I'm talking the wider picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking, mm. uh, I'm maybe going away from talk of the town and going to talk of number 10. But. <laughs> I think as a squad, we've moved on as well. I think the squad now, yes, as compared okay. to the squad in March, I mean, yeah, yeah. with the well, players well, that John's well, brought in, the young players, I mean, we've got a fantastic squad now, I think, of players, especially midfielders. Yeah, well, we're going we're gonna to come and look at some of those uh, after the break. Um, I just wanted to, to find out from you, John, because at, at that time, it was very much like football's postponed until... 
first of April, I think it was. Then it was first of March, uh, first of May, and then and it just kept getting pushed back. From a footballing point of view, what was going on behind the scenes? Was it a case of you were preparing for that day, or in your mind had you gone, do you know what, this is done? Well, we was on the coach going up to Port Vale yeah, when it was called off. Um, I think if it was correct, about 11, 12 o'clock the Saturday morning, and we was just on our way there and it was called off, but... The other side of that is, though, you can't, you know, you've got to look on the positive side of it because who's to say we would have carried on winning? Who's to say that we might not have got beat? Who's to say this? Who's to say that? You, can only, you can't influence what's gone on in the past. You can only influence what's in front of you. And we approached every game. We don't approach any game to get beat. Um, we're not good enough to change it and chop it around and rotate and all this old cobblers, in my opinion. Because if you deserve your shirt, you keep your shirt. And that's what, the, that's what it's all based on. It's all based on hard work and working for each other. Absolutely. Uh, after the break, we are going to take a look at the pre-season, once football was back underway, and the rest of 2020, uh, which was the start of the 2020-21 season. Since 2017, £30 million has been lost to pension scammers. To do what they got to do, but it was the worst or the most difficult pre season I've ever had and ever been involved with. The same as 99% of football people I think you speak to. We started, we never got together until the 1st of August, um, the, obviously this year. And I think our first game was at the end of August, yeah. And they were all training in sixes, yeah. Yes, I'm saying yeah, yeah. so. The first time we met as 11 v 11, we had three weeks, we played Millwall who the year previous was looked like they could have gone up into the Premier League at one time. And we get beat 3-1 and the negativity around this place. Eden Utilities can help your organisation to convert the energy it uses every day into a more sustainable source of supply. We are a professional, totally independent, but friendly utility consultancy that can offer any organisation a way of converting its own waste into energy. This provides a number of beneficial rewards. So, if you already recycle items like plastics and paper, you could now use the rest of the waste your business creates to generate power for use back into your organisation. If you don't do any recycling yet, you could start now, without the need for any additional effort or large investment in time or cash to accommodate the initiative. Our Eden Infinity product provides your business with a way of not only helping the planet, but also saving you money. Your business creates waste. That waste is collected, and then we work with your energy supplier to ensure that the power generated from your waste is used to supply electricity back to you. In doing something like this, along with doing your bit to help save the planet and meeting your business's green targets, it provides great PR for your organization, sending a very positive message to your suppliers, clients, and stakeholders. It's something to be very proud of. At Eden Utilities, we pride ourselves on being unique with our continuous innovation along with our ethos of providing a fully transparent pricing model to all our clients. Our personable approach means we always work with you to find the best for you. We regard ourselves as an extension of your business, a partner. Eden Utilities, your sustainability partner. Welcome back as we are halfway through our look at 2020 and we move into to the current season now. Uh, firstly, you, John, you mentioned earlier on um, about how many of those players who, who aren't there anymore, um, particularly I think the, the big names who, who went were sort of Oli Palmer, Bezu Bala, Panuche Kamara. Um, I, think, I, I think there was a, an initial period of panic, wasn't there, amongst the fan base, people going, oh, well, we've lost this player, lost this player, what are we going to do? And it was the usual, why have they gone? But looking at looking at the players we, we've brought in, um, you're looking at Sam Ashford, Sam Matthews, 
Tyler Frost, Archie Davis, Tom, uh, Tony Craig, Jake Hessenthaler, Tom Nichols, Max Waters, uh, Nick Sarula. All of these players are coming in the summer have all made a big impact, haven't they, already this season? They're not making up the numbers, they're here and they're, they're improving the side. Yeah, well, Max and uh, Nick never came till October. So in the summer, we were sitting here thinking, which I was quite confident, I knew that we had a good squad anyway, a basis of a good squad, because it proved it from the season before. Um, but it wasn't that we lost them players, them players wanted to go. Let's get it right, you know, they didn't want to stay. So rather than bend over backwards like it's happened in the past and give people promise in the world, we'll shut the door on the way out. You know, there was good servants to the club and you've got to move on. If you don't move on, you just stand there and keep licking your wounds and of course people are going to say why are they go in and why are they this, that and the other, but it's football. It, they, you know, people want to move on and think they're going to bigger and better things. Good luck to them. And when, when, you, when you bring in players, uh, I suppose this could be sort of word, uh, and, and yourself, when you bring in a player and you build a squad, in your mind, are you completely confident that it's going to work out and you're, you're adamant you know it's going to work? Or is there an, always an element of, well, I hope it works. Is it, you, you've done your work, you've done your homework, but you're never 100% sure? No, because uh, you know what you're bringing them in for. That's the beauty of the lads that I've brought in. majority of them I've known and seen over the years anyway. And you know what you're going to get. Ability. Nobody goes out there to play bad. Nobody goes out there to make a mistake. And if they do, you've got to make sure it's an honest one. Um, it's when you get the so-called players that the journeymen that are coming around that are just chasing the goose that uh, does certain things with a golden egg every day. <laughs> and um, they're the ones you don't want to do. You know, you don't want people sitting here just taking the wages and you want to move on. You've got to keep bringing in better people because better people, you know, what attract even better people. And the next thing you know, you've got a squad built. And, and Erdem, you've now done a number of transfer windows um, since you've been at the club, sort of going back to sort of when, when Dermot was manager. And there seem, every manager seems to have a different, a different style, I find, in the transfer window. Like, like Dermot wanted to bring in young players who he seemed to know a lot of players from sort of top academies. Um, Harry Kill seemed to want more sort of experienced pros who had sort of played hundreds of games in the Football League. How would you rate the transfer window in, in that summer? During your time here, that we had, well, the one that we the just summer's had. just gone. How would you rate that amongst all of your transfers? To be honest, I think it's um, transfer window is always a test between the relationship between the gaffer and myself. To be honest, that's one thing I've learned because it's always a strenuous time, um, and you, there's no matches to distract you. So it's just a constant discussion. And now with the COVID, it was even a longer period. But I can safely say, not just because he's here, it was the easiest window I've ever had because. I feel we shared the same philosophy and the same idea. We both wanted the same thing for the club. And at the same time, the wealth of contacts Yemsi's got is phenomenal. So what happens is you're learning as yourself going, OK, like, for example, I'll try and do a deal. And then you go, no, that's too much. And usually it's the other way yeah. around. <laughs> so it, it was good in the sense that there's a really good teamwork and the identification processes were good, like in the sense where with Archie Davis, you know, there's, the process has always been the same in the club. And everyone, you know, you let people breathe and come with the players. And accordingly, if a gaffer doesn't want someone, there's no, you can't bring someone in. Number one, it's got to be a player that gaffer can trust. And that's what we had this year, where there's a lot more players that he's worked with in the past. So there's a lot more trust, a lot more knowledge of what the players can do. Whereas the gaffers before, they hadn't had experience in the EFL before. They hadn't had experience of working with those players before, day in, day out. Whereas the gaffers work day in, day out with these people. He'll know that field, he'll know Hesse having worked with him. The guy's got 250 EFL games. He knows Tony Craig from Millwall, but he knows them day in, day out. And that was the difference because you're bringing in, there's less, of course, there's a risk with every player, but you're bringing in less risk players and you know what you're going to get out from them, which is hard work and the trust. And it's been a fantastic learning curve for me this window because I think I definitely have sharpened uh, a skill set which I, I'm passionate about. So in that sense, it's, for me, it's been the best window and long let it continue. And I think our windows, hopefully, we've set the bar high now, and hopefully, like the gaffer always says, we've got to better ourselves. So hopefully, in the next window, we better ourselves again and we keep going at it, because I think there's a good synergy, there's a good chemistry, and we want the best for the football club. Yeah, absolutely. And, and um, I mean, having said all the positive things about the recruitment, obviously, the, se the season kicked off, we got a tough draw against Millwall in the, um, in the uh, Carabao Cup, and then obviously, we first game away at Port Vale, which is a notoriously difficult place to go. Um, but then we, we got our first points on the board uh, and also the first appearance for, for Talk of the Town um, at home to, to Scunthorpe. But then we, we went on, um, I believe it was called 
We, we, we won one nil um, against, against Gunthorpe, and, and Tom <coughs> Tom Nichols got the goal, John. How important was it for him to uh, to, to get to get firing straight or get the ball in the back of the net early on? Well, I think people was doubting me. People doubted me on on a lot of the signings that we done. I.e., a few of the fans anyway, but it's their opinion to do what they got to do. But it was the worst or the most difficult pre-season I've ever had. I've never been involved with the same as 99% of football people I think you speak to. We started, we never got together until the 1st of August, um, the, obviously this year, and I think our first game was at the end of August. Yeah, and they were all training in sixes. Yes, yeah, so I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. So the first time we met as 11 v 11, we had three weeks. We played Millwall, who the year previous was looked like they could have gone up into the Premier League at one time. And we get beat 3-1, and the negativity around this place was unbelievable. We then go to Port Vale, who, like you say, is an odd place. Once again, the negativity was unbelievable. And you doubt yourself sometimes, and you think, it's, I hope this is not the old, here we go, crawly mentality. Because it, we was treating them games as friendlies. You have to, because it's the only way you're going to get your match fitness. And I don't mean friendlies that you didn't want to win them. We wasn't fit enough. And I kept saying to people, don't judge us. Don't judge us now. Judge us in, like I said, Christmas time. Obviously, don't want to lose. But I was really, really, it, it got to me a little bit, the negativity. Uh, and everybody, you know, it was doom and gloom. Because we'd done so well and finished so well the season before. I think, I think um, sort of to, to back up what, you, what you're saying there, I can remember you saying about Jake Hess and Tyler. For, for a long time, because obviously he missed pre-season altogether, didn't he? He came in a, a little bit later than this. And I can remember you saying, he's not fit, he's not fit. And, and, and he was sort of being used sporadically, he was on the bench. Whereas now I'm looking at him every week and the amount of work he gets through every single week is, is unbelievable. And he's sort of become a really important player for us. And it is, was a case of he needed to get fit. Well, without raping up old ground, there was a, a, certain people questioned me about Max Waters when he first came. Oh, why, why is he taking him off? What's he being this? What's he being that? Max never done a pre-season. Max joined us in October when everybody else was, was on, on the bit, so to speak. We was ready to go. So, listen, my job, and it's been for it for years, is, is you gauge the players. You don't want to kill them. You don't want to slaughter the players before they've even got going. And you've got to back your own judgment sometimes. And that's where me and Lee work so well together because he's been at the top level. I've been lucky enough to work at the top level with Bournemouth, Premier Leagues and what have you. It doesn't change. It's all about players. And if you ain't got the players, you ain't got a football club. So you've got to look after the diamonds when they come in the door. Sometimes you've got to polish them up. Not every ev everyone you polish is going to be a top diamond, but you've got to work with them. Yeah, and, and, and I think... I always think football fans get very sucked into the moment. So, so as you're saying there about oh, Millwall, Port Vale, oh, well, I've lost, oh, we're not good. And it's like, well, that's two yeah, games out of 50 odd. But what was annoying me, Joe, it weren't only football fans, it was people that worked within the club as well that are having their doubts as well, which is annoying. But listen, it is what it is, and we're over that bit now, hopefully. And to get judged by what you do, not what you've done. And, and I think an, an example of that, sort of away from Crawley, was, is Oldham, who, who started the season really poorly, but now, now they're flying. Um, but we went there and it was, it was a great game. It was tense at the end, but uh, we, we got a good win away at Oldham. Yeah, well, see, no, you, no, no team, is, like I said to you earlier, no team is going to let you beat them. You've got to go there and you, we've got to do what we've got to do. I'm not too worried about what the opposition are, to be honest. All right, you want to know what shape they are. You want to know what you do, but it's who we've got available. It's like we were just getting ourselves flowing and we had a load of injuries. So what do you do? Do you, do you go in the press, just you sit there crying your eyes out, telling lies to everybody? Or you then be honest and you get accused of, well, what's you doing that for? Well, you're doing that because that's what you've got to do. We, we also learned away at Oldham, Ken, that we had uh, a goal scoring right back in George Frankham. <laughs> we were, we're first of a few world in this season. That's right. He's been a good player this season. And it's just a shame he broke his arm, wasn't it, a few weeks back. And obviously he was the mainstay of that back four that, again, this year was playing really well. But the players that have come in and replaced George uh, in, in the last uh, you know, three or four weeks... Uh, I think they've been impressive myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of, yeah. So it's shown good depth. Uh, Erdem, I, I remember this game. I, th I think it was after this goal here. It, it was very tight, wasn't it, for a minute? And I think they, they I think this might even be it. I think they, they missed a big chance at the end um, where, they, where they could have snatched a draw. Th there's been a big thing about our, our away form, wasn't there, before this game? Yeah. And, and, and 
I think that sort of got the monkey off our back a bit, didn't it, to, to pick up a win away at a Well, 100%. I mean, it'd been a year, I think it was Lincoln, was the game before, but when YMZ took over as well, we're getting a few draws away. Like when we went to Exeter, I think we are better than them. We could yeah, have won that of, game. Yeah, a lot of draws. And when you look at our away form, this would be Oldham away, uh, Leighton Orient away, Torquay away and Wimbledon away. And we've picked up points at Harrogate, you know, we've picked up a point. Um, so we are Colchester once again, and we should have won that game. We could have won that game. Which shows a Salford, yep. Sorry, Gaffer. But uh, <laughs> but uh, but uh, there, there's a general improvements um, of a vast improvement away, and we look like a team that when we travel, got no fear, and it's hopefully we can carry on with that form. And it shows. And the good thing is, like Ken said, George is a massive player for us this year. He's a skipper, and from right back, I think got two goals and three assists already. I know Archie and David, they're good players. Don't get me wrong, but George has got a massive experience in promotion. And he wants to be around, just sign a two-year deal with the club. So he's looking at the longevity of the club. And I think, well, you know, we missed Glenn in, in the Harrogate game as well. So, we, yeah. we, you know, we, we've had a key, few key injuries at the back. And I think the cup run also halted maybe our uh, season form in the league a little bit. Because, you know, you're playing Torquay away, you're getting a load of knocks. Then, you know, Wimbledon, you go to Mansfield straight away. So it's taking a, a lot of energy was taken out of the team. But, they, but they've but they carried on and, you know, we, we're doing the best we possibly can. And I'm delighted. Yeah, yeah myself and Gary, obviously, we, we do the away commentary. And we've come away for lots of games, well, not just since John's been here, but before John was here, where, where, we, where we sit after the match, obviously off, off record and say, well, how did we, you know, we deserve much more there. The, the way we played, we deserve much more than what we got. If you know what I mean, and uh, and sometimes it, that, that's football. I know you go away and you, you're the better team and you don't win. But this season, I, I think we've been getting more what we you know what we should get from the away games, which is good. Yeah, I think we're less naive now. Mm. I think there's an experienced. Uh, I mean, the way it's, it's a real football team that's working together and it's a team. I mean, I remember if we're going back into boxing then and going to reminisce a year ago. I'm in the first day of the MC coming to the training ground. Yeah, I've never heard the training ground so loud. It was everyone was buzzing like, and maybe it's a wrong thing to say as you just let go of a manager. But everyone's everyone was smiling, mm. and you know I, I remember saying like, even talking to the chairman on the phone that day. I go, I've I mean, here's a positive for you. I said I've never heard the training ground in such a positive and uh, happy mode, and I thought this is a good testament. You know, th this is a good starting sign for me because you always see that the, the you know, and that has carried on. Everyone's always smiling. We're always joking. You know, of course we have our serious times, but. Overall, the mood is very, it's a good, uh, there's a good mood in the camp set by the gaffer. Mm. So, you know, hats well, he's off. Got a good sense of humour, John, hasn't he? I mean, he's... Oh, he's got to have work in here. You're, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all have work in for Erdem, John. Yeah, we all have. But I think on the back of that as well, I think last year the pitch was played a big part. Um, <laughs> both both in, in the opposition and for us, because it was proper football matches. You, you had to dig in. And I, I just listen. I, I back from an era where pitches was pitches. They had sand mm. on them. They had mud on them. They had, and that's what you had, you know. And mm. it's a compliment. I don't know how Ben, no, not blowing smoke out of him, but how 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 his groundsmen do the pitches and that sometimes with the amount of weather and that you got to go. You, it's a compliment. But listen, you got you got if you're a good side, great one of the greatest managers ever. I think it was Shankly said, good teams play on anything. Mm. And so whether you, you know, you can always make excuses, but it's not the pitch that wins you the game, in my opinion. It's the players you've got playing on it. Yeah, it's, no, it's a good shout. And, and uh, so after that game we, we saw there, we did have a couple of probably what perceived as, as poor results. Um, Sheffield United were struggling at the time and they, they nicked a late, a late point and we went away to Cheltenham, which you spoke about earlier. It was a really tough game, very sort of physical. Um, and in that time, I can't. Was it? Did we play Ipswich or Arsenal? And it was uh, Max Waters his, his first game. And Arsenal first. Game. Arsenal in the in the, in the leasing dot com, and, and he came in, and then and then I suppose off the back of that, did did he start the next game? I think no, he was substituted. It was bench. one of the best tactical decisions that I've ever made in my career, because we was drawing nil nil at half time, and Max come on the second half and scored two goals. George Frankham again with a with another great yeah, shot. The, it was the best 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 decision I've ever made in football to put Max on, and it really helped that uh, Ashley Addison had pulled his hamstring. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. he to, <laughs> so, he to, so we had to come off. I'm sure he'll be did did you pay him to do that, then, John? Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, 
but but yeah, he did. He did. Sort of, I don't think I don't think expectations were particularly high. No, no one. You look at you look at Max's CV and it, it wasn't exactly glowing. But well, this he did is where money. this is what I'm saying to you. This is where I, I, I I'm not saying to say that he would have scored the goals he's got. I knew what I'd seen and the levels that because when we won the league, well, I say we got promoted about it with Exeter. We used to have a lad up front. The, the fans will remember we had strike force, a lad called Adam Stansfield who bless him died of cancer yeah, yeah. and he would run and worry defenders for fun mm. ball over the top and he reminded me Max a little bit when I see him play and I thought you got the energy there of a, of a Stanners who I know that teams used to be petrified because you can't mark it you can't no. it's very difficult to mark pace and Max and Tyler and, and the lads there I, I honestly see us building together and knowing Max would score goals yeah. For us, and and linking very nicely, Max did score again away at away at Exeter. Um, frustrating one this, wasn't it? Because because we we actually played really well for an hour, and and, and maybe I don't know a bit a bit of tiredness. And you, you were saying no, no, after the game, no excuses whatsoever. It was <laughs> naivety and stupidity, and players not performing cost us this game. You can dress it up as much as you want, and we learn from that. And it ain't me sitting here slaughtering people. You've got to learn from it. If you want to go on and win things, you can't give goals away like we was giving away. I got myself in a little bit of trouble this night, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was going to clip that up, but I thought, <laughs> you know what, I'll, I'll leave that. But it, 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 was never, it, was never against, it was never against fans. But when people are asking you about your players making mistakes in Glen and why you're making decisions, I never knew that fans was, you know, without going into old ground, it wasn't directed at any fans. It was me being honest again. So if people want me to be honest, ask the questions. If you don't want me to be honest, don't ask. And I lie and whatever like everyone else does. Not everybody. I think Joe. a big positive, we've not been outplayed by anyone. I don't any of the games I've watched, we've not been outplayed. We've beaten ourselves a little bit in games, I think, made individual areas and stuff like that. We've been, our previous season, we've been beaten properly, but we haven't been beaten or outplayed uh, and, by and anyone. And I think the teams that have... Good shot, the, 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 te the teams that have beaten us... You, you'd argue comfortably, like Carlisle three 0 at home and, and away at Cheltenham. As we've said, they, they were very physical, weren't they? And they, and they were, mm. um, they, they scrapped and, and they're not maybe not technically the greatest sides in the league, but but they're big, physical, and, and a lot yes. of teams are coming unstuck against. Them. Well, that's what I'm saying. Don't knock them because that's what their strength is and that's what they're good at. We ain't at the moment that strong. We got we, we're growing up slowly, slowly but surely. We're beginning to come through it. Um, Last year, when we had a big man up front in Ollie, it was a different way that we had to play. And now we've got pace all around. This is it's just that final third that where we're a little bit sharper, that we're putting the ball in the back of the net. But listen, for me, defenders win your leagues and strikers win your matches. And so if you've got a solid back four and a solid midfield, you've got half a chance of winning, getting promoted and winning things. If you haven't, no matter how many you're getting in one end, if you're doubling it up the other end, you've got no chance. Yeah, but even the exit of the game, that I mean the, the goal they won, obviously but Glenn, where he struck it against their forward, how often do they go in? You see them every game, yeah, and they go great. over the ball, or they bounce, or the goalkeeper gets it back. And it really was a freak goal uh, that, that they scored. And, uh, and, exactly. and really, to, to lose 2-1 to I that sort of goal, there's nothing you can do about it, really. Yeah, it just exactly. happens. And, exactly. and I can remember look, looking at the fixtures and going, do you know what, we've got a tough run of games coming up. We, we played Salford before this game, and away at Salford, which is always going to be tough. Home at Tranmere, who had just been relegated. Then we were at home against Cambridge United, who were flying. I think they were top of the league when they came here. So you were sort of sitting there going, three, three tough games after that Exeter one, but we ended up picking, seven, picking up seven points, and, and which, was, which was a really good return at that time. Yeah, and I think, like I say to you, it, it took us, it's still taking us. We still, we're not the only club, by the way, but you don't realise how much the pre-season means to a football club. Because you get all your work done, you get your set pieces done, you get your corners done, you get your fitness done. And when you don't get the time to do that, you're learning within games, good and bad. You're learning about defenders, you're learning about, I keep saying it, pairings. I suppose the players learning each other. The amount of, of players course. that were brought in, they didn't have a lot of time to, to gel. And I keep hearing this about we've got a big squad. We haven't got a big squad. We've got a squad that's full of young players because we don't run an under 23s. Because we don't do like a lot of other clubs do, every one of our players plays and trains as a first team player. And that's good for when we come in, good or bad, because the players that are picked, they know what each other are doing, hopefully. And we just hope on the day that we do it better than the opposition do. Simple. In a way, in a way, can that be useful? Because like the likes of Nick Cerula, maybe he was one of those young players. Or, is it a case of you've seen him in training against 
against your experienced first team players and you've gone, do you know what? I think he's capable. Well, we'll chuck him in. That's the only way you, you it's, it's no good playing your players or, or trying to build a side. You might as well go and get Orsham, um under 12 scout brigade down there and you beat them every week. Don't mean to say you're going to be a good side and you're going <laughs> to learn anything. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying to you about the season players that come in the training grounds. You, you learn little tricks of the trade, when to go for tackles, when not, when to stop players, when to strike, when not to strike. It's all about you know learning. That's what coaching means. You always keep an open mind and you're always there trying to improve players. And, and we've just we've just seen a clip there of Tony Craig making a great clearance off the line. How important is he to that? What you're saying about the older players helping the younger players to develop? Well, when we looked at the squad, I knew t I've known Tony a long, long time, and he's, he's a winner. Now, I've heard he lacks pace, he lacks this, he lacks that, but you don't see the things that he that he does for you. In purely as a you know as a motivator, galvanises people, organises people. And we've exposed the back four. As I said to you, I think our big fault this year, and it's not a criticism to the two boys, but sometimes where we've got a new midfield, it, it has been open a couple of times. We have got, I wouldn't say played around, we've been played through, which I hate anyway. But we're beginning to come to terms with that. Um, if you expose anybody with pace, but, you know, other sides have got pace, you're going to get caught. Tony but, seems to be a, a different character to George as a captain, whereby I can imagine George being more of an arm round the player and Tony being more like a rocket up the yeah. backside kind if, of captain. Well, Erdan, we've just come back to the training ground and if you would have heard George swearing and Oliver Newton at players today, <laughs> I think you might have thought differently. But no, I do agree with you. Tony's more physical doing it. George is a little, little bit more quieter and cuter, but they're all beginning to know one another. There's a, diff there's a difference of telling a player what's gone wrong I, I always say it on a pitch, if you're going to dig someone out, don't be a commentator. Don't turn them like a commentator would. You should be doing that. I should be doing this. He should be doing that. He should be... No, let's just focus on what we're doing. Focus on where we do it. And then we'll all tell them in the dressing rooms and that stays in the dressing room. I think we've all mentioned it. I think he's the most controlled, angry man. Yeah. I've seen on a football yeah, pitch, yeah. Tony. He's got that. He, he's on the line, isn't he? But he's the right side of it. Yeah, exactly yeah. He's, he's, he's it's called, called experience. I'm like that on the dugout most of the time. It'll be better when the fans are in, John. For you oh, in the dugout, yeah. It would be. You miss the fans because the thing that we've had to do, it, it, well, every club has to. You have to create your own atmosphere. Yeah. And you have to uh, have to create your own team. That's what I'm saying about the Millwall game. You know what? What people? What annoyed me with that? We scored against the championship side, mm. against the lad that had never played pro football, and that was washed all the way because all you get is, well, what are you taking at Gillian? Well, I think, Crawley, we've got to be a little bit... Sometimes you don't look in your own and see what we've got under the bonnet. And sometimes mm. we're too self-critical yeah. and not seeing where we are, how far we've come. Miles ago, but Man United still got miles mm. to go. Every club's learning and evolving, but sometimes just sit back and sniff the roses of what we've got in front of us. Yeah, because when you look at the squad, obviously, and the young players you brought in over the summer, everyone doesn't talk about Tony, do they, in, in that sort of same exactly. sort of sentence. But, but he has been the main st one of the mainstays exactly. for me at the back. Exactly. You know, him, him and the Tony have really got themselves together. Exactly. Yeah. And Talk that comes to play. Talking of mainstays, Ken, you're about 85. You've, you've been watching <laughs> Crawley since, since the start of the war. Yeah, OK. Was this the craziest <laughs> game of football that you've ever seen? Well, yeah, I mean, talking away, I mean... <coughs> You know, just to, to one the, be one of the people that was there to watch it, Joe, obviously in the commentary box, was was fantastic. Twice we went two goals down, and twice we came back, and then we scored the winner. And, I mean, me and Gary were already packing up the stuff when we were 5-3 down, and it went 5 all. Fantastic game. And, and, and Tom, obviously, yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> you saw some of the game. Uh, you ended up sat out, outside the hospital, couldn't even go in with, 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 with Tom McGill. You, you were getting updates, I think, from Ben. Yeah, well, I heard we were two down when, was it when Tom went out? Quite literally. Um, yeah. And yeah, I saw the, I heard that Nico scored from the penalty spot just outside waiting for the, the taxi to the station. And yeah, that was, yeah, that wasn't, Ken just saying he was like very fortunate to be one of the people there watching it. Didn't feel like that at the time because no, yeah, we were sat just right. behind the goal when that happened, and it was yeah, yeah it wasn't it one yeah one of those ones that won't happen to wasn't nice to see. But I'll tell you what it got to me though. The thing with it happened when Tom went down. I went over to Gary, their manager, and I said, "Should we call the game off?" Because <laughs> we was two 0 down, and he didn't want to know. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. 
and he, did, and he came up to me afterwards and he said, I won't tell you what he said, but it was, <laughs> yeah. it was an Anglo-Saxon cut of words and he said, I wish we would have called the game. Yeah. yeah, I bet he did. Obviously, this was when Glenn was injured as well and Nels yeah. had just come in that, was yeah. it that week we he just signed, We signed the goalkeeper at 10.30 on Sunday morning because <laughs> named on the team sheet that we done first of all, Danny Borman was a reserve goalkeeper. Yeah, that's there's a, a little part of me which would have loved to have seen that's a that. Fact. <laughs> I'm not sure it would have panned well, out. There's, the a, there's a big part of me. I'm glad that I didn't see <laughs> yeah. it. I mean, he could have been a bit more rougher there. To be fair, Nelson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember in the minibus on the way down when Claire got the phone, well, got the, the phone call to say that he could play, got and her contacting you. And uh, that's yeah, what I say. I mean, it's not. It's a fact. And it's funny how football works out. But the good thing is, like I say to you, sometimes forget what we got in. We don't give in. We don't give in. It's simple. There wasn't a ton of clip at the back stick. Hopes you. At, at this point, John, is it a case of like tactics out the window? Just like you, you're two goals behind, go for it? Or? No, I think with the FA Cup, you've got nothing to lose, have you? There's no points. There's no... Look at that. Even that, I'm still getting the ump with Archie. Doing that. <laughs> but but and that's naivety. See, that's what I'm saying about a kid. Look at Tony looking at him. Tony wants to rip Archie's head off. Look at the fella. Because it's naive. Now, all of a sudden, did Torquay think they won it? I don't know. Did we think we'd lost it? No chance. You know, and then you go like again, two goals there. I think by this time, I just nearly smashed my knee up because I kicked the water bottle. And, oh, it's ridiculous. And the referee wasn't the, uh, couple of decisions was a bit dodgy. But look, they thought they'd won it now. But you don't see Tony off camera and me off camera. <laughs> And then all of a sudden this happens. We work on that sort of goal at training. <laughs> 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 but what a header from Tom in a minute. Yo. For, for the oh, oh, think that four yeah. post header. He's yeah. good in the air, and, and the ball he's in the, the, the ball across from Tarian, I mean yeah. Yeah. It, that's, that's going to be part of uh, our well, folklore history in, the, in, the, in the, this one here. Mm. When we was... What, what a header. From, from Tom was it Tom? Yeah. No. No, no, Tom no, Nico scores it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. See, I thought you we were on the wind-up when that Nichols goal went in. You are all texting me going, oh, it's five fouls. Like, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, th I think that sort of... Uh, we spoke at the start, uh, start of this part about how well, we were worried we wouldn't have enough goals. But it's been the complete opposite, and we were having an abundance of goals. Really, we're, like, we're, we're always a threat. Lee sitting there, uh, Water scored, Nichols got a hat trick, and Addison pops up with, with a great. John, didn't you say that? Look, if you look at our players at the end, it's not that they're relieved that they've won. It's not excitement that they've won. It's relief that they won because they know they should have done better. <coughs> and that's the standard of keep setting yourself. Mm. Two key people after that game, obviously I've, I've worked there, but they was fantastic. And they couldn't believe that they'd lost it, to no. be fair. And of course, we let them know that they did. But <laughs> it was good. And that it shows you the character and the strength. As I keep saying, you never give in, no matter who's out on the pitch. Mm. John, am I right in saying that Tom was playing wide at previous clubs, Tom Nichols? No, you're wrong. <laughs> no, he wasn't. What happened? He, I, I knew Tom when he was 12. 12, he must have been 11, 12 at Exeter. And a, as a kid coming through, he, he, everybody was speaking about him. And we tried to sign him once at Bournemouth. Um, but that's another story. But when he went to Bristol, they was playing him wide, wide, and they was playing him wide, left. Because Tom's like that. Wherever he plays, he'll run and run and run. Um, it, but he's, he, he sort of like coming there people are going at me oh he don't score enough goals I said well he ain't getting the chance to score enough goals spoke to him he had a couple of good options to go to but when I, I got on the phone to him in the summer I think within a day he was signed done yeah, he's very, here very quick ones yeah, he was very keen to work with the gaffer like most of them were like even Tony Craig Sam Matthews they came down they didn't need much convincing they wanted to fight and that's to be fair that's why quietly i was confident that we were going to have a good season good characters um this was this was frustrating isn't it, this next game um yeah. away at harrogate not 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 just because we can see the late goal but i know you i think you mentioned after this game john we'd missed a lot of chances didn't we to put the game to bed particularly in the first half well, that's where, see, this is what I'm saying <coughs> to you about, I don't mean it disrespectful to cruelly people or cruelly supporters. One minute we're talking about how many goals we score and now we're moaning how many we miss, <laughs> which it happens in games. You know, we're creating the chances and you can't disagree with it, we missed them. But give, the, give them credit sometimes as well for what they've done. They stuck at it. 
you know, if we come off here winning one nil, you'd be happy. But they stuck at it, Arrogate. They're a new side. Um, but that, that's what I'm saying to you about. If, if you listen to too many people telling you what's wrong with your team, what are you going to do? Change them all now because you miss chances or praise everybody for creating them? That was a stupid miss. That was that. <laughs> <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah, that this, this season we have been creating chances, though, haven't we? Massive. I mean, I mean, Max scores the goals, but they're created for him. Some of them, aren't they? Oh, well, Tom Nichols, uh, Tom Nichols, and, and uh, yeah, you know, a few others have actually, said, yeah, of, yeah, uh, they've made it. You know, when Nadas has come on, bless him, he was great for us last year, and he's done fantastic again this year. Mm. See, so look, look at that goal again. Another preventable goal. Though. Yeah, very much That's so. how close we are. I keep saying to the lads, we're really close to going one way, but if we're not careful, we, you know, you can't keep relying on strikers to get you out of an hole. We've got to be better, and to be fair to the boys, they have been. We then went, um, we went away to, to AFC Wimbledon in, in the Cup. I mean, it, November, November-wise, in the league, we, we didn't actually pick up too many points. We, had, well, we, we only picked up one point in November, but... We had the two big cup games and, and two two very good wins, which has set up a, a big tie against Leeds. Yeah, sorry, I'm taking over a little bit now because what what annoyed, what you don't see on here, I think this was the fifth game or the sixth game that we played, or it was the start of the fifth or sixth game, and we'd gone. It seemed like we went on Phileas Fogg tours because I think we played Kidderminster the week we played these, and we had a midweek game, I think, because we played Wimbledon on the Sunday, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we played on the Tuesday. Um, I'm not sure who it was against, but yeah, we, we did. And then we had another games. game after this on another Tuesday and yeah. another game on the Saturday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, went, we went away to Colchester after this. Well, this, this was, was Mick Jen's first point. start, wasn't it? This yeah, one? It was, this yeah. was, yeah. And Bully was unbelievable yeah. in this game as well. Yeah, Cease, I think it was his first yeah, start his, for a while. Because yeah. of injuries again, but... Cause it, that was class, wasn't it? Jack yeah. Powell, that through yeah. ball. But the difference is, because we don't sit there mo moaning about it and whining about injuries, you just get on with it. As, as cruelly have to and as we have to it ain't always going to work out but as I keep saying it won't be through lack of effort and, and, and as you said we went uh, we, we played sort of the, the Tuesday after this game as well so um, so we got, we got the win here we, we then went away to Colchester which is which is coming up um, but but j just before just before we, we finish on this Erdem obviously that this the, the two two big wins in the FA Cup have set up the game against Leeds. How important is that going to be for the club? Do you think come come well, the new year? I mean, look, we've been talking about this a lot. If if it was a normal season with the transfer revenue game and the, and the cup revenue game, we would have broken even for the first time in the five years. So that shows how significant it is. And the fact that now we're in a COVID crisis, or we're going for a, a pandemic, uh, which is affecting our season, we probably would, you know, we would have got more. So even the revenues now is even more. Like we've talked about this before, we've walked around the pitch. This is a massive boost for the football club. And also it's a, like the valuation of the players goes up. People remember that Crawley is still fighting and we're still building. It's a fantastic, this is a fantastic achievement. And Leeds coming here, is probably, it's probably the biggest game in 125 year history of this football club. And when you're doing one, you know, it's the first in 125 years. Or that type, of, you know that you, you know that's how important it is. I mean, I, I couldn't, I couldn't praise the gaffer and the players enough and Lee enough because what they've brought to the football club is belief and identity. And it's not, I'm not just saying this, but it's not just about them. It's about, it's about the whole club. Like they've, they've made it about everyone. And I, I can remember Tony Craig saying in a post, I think it might have been uh, the infamous post match Exeter interviews. And he, I loved what he said. He said, um, "Oh yeah, we've had a bad." I uh, almost did an impression then. Uh, I, I hear we've had a bad uh, away, away form. form. That's well, not going to happen while I'm at the club. And, and I think going away to Colchester is a prime example of that and, and almost won the game. Keeper had to pull off a few blinding saves. Look, I'm a big fan of Tony in the sense of he's a leader. He doesn't need a captain's arm man to be a leader. He, the, the guy's naturally a leader and what he's done in the, football and in the football game is fantastic. And I think he rubs off onto, onto the youngsters. Even like, I know the um, same with Mark Wright in a way where you're bringing in someone who's done very well in life and if you've got 21, 22, 23, 24 year olds who are lost in life all they've got to do is look in the dressing room and look to the left and right and you've got examples of success and that you can follow those people so I think it's very savvy from the gaffer to bring in people like that to rub off on the youngsters. Yeah, yeah, but all around his squad and, and, and I suppose in similar in a similar fashion to the to the Torquay game here that the first half I mean I mean Ben, Tom you, you were at this game 
it, it wasn't the greatest first half performance, was it? But we, we come out extremely strong in the second. Yeah, I think this might have been one of the ones where Tony might have said something at half time, I believe. I'm not sure. Um, he mentioned his post match interview that a few words were said in the changing room and they came out a completely different side second half. So. I think the gaffer was on the phone at half time. Yeah. <laughs> I was, believe it or not. I was on the phone because. T- telling him to bring Max Waters on. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> telling him that he's got an hamstring. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was the phone wasn't smashed what, up, wasn't it? What, <laughs> what people don't realise, Max still's not, he's still not fit. He's, he's October now. What are we now? December. What he's achieved in a couple of months is a credit to the team, but also to Max himself as an individual. He's looked after himself. He's got on with it. And most importantly of all, he's hungry for more. He wants to do more. He's improving every game and every day. Um, and he ain't. it's impossible for him to score in every game. Um, but the good thing about him is a lot of his finishes are different. Yeah. They're not the same thing. So if you was marking him, you wouldn't know, oh, well, he's going to show on his left or he's going to go on his right. So we've got the players now, hopefully, to bounce off of him and create, not only create his chances, because off the back of it, you know, Max is getting to be a decent footballer. I, I think it's a, it's, that's an interesting point. And, and w- without obviously not digging out any, any former players, we, we would never do that as a club. Um, but but Besley Barlow, what you're saying there about scoring different goals, Besley Barlow you started off last season scoring a lot of goals, but a lot of them were very similar, and you almost sensed that teams had stopped him oh, playing. I was going to say, there seems to be more of a, a team agenda rather than an individual agenda. I'm not naming names of previous players at all. Come on, let's name names. No, 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 name names, go on. But, yeah. on <laughs> I, I think, see, I only saw a lot of the home games last year, I've travelled more away this year, obviously, but I think when you, people could be laid in to someone else's score, that wasn't happening, but it seems like Nadison on at the weekend, it doesn't, doesn't matter who scores, it's as a team and they win together, lose together and I think there's more of a team agenda than individual agendas this season, definitely. You yeah, well, when people were looking at Max, obviously they're, they're looking at Max every game, aren't they? Now we've got to stop Max Waters and it, it gives the other players around him a little bit of space uh, to show what they can do as well. And, you and know. obviously Max here, as we can see on the screen, scored a hat-trick against, against Barrow. I think also the players, are, I think they're, they're afraid to lose as well because they don't yeah. want to go into the dressing room <laughs> yeah. after yeah. Yeah. believe yeah. me yeah. it gets a bit lively yeah <laughs> but the thing with it is it, 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 it's it's the belief in the lads it, you know it's the, of course they don't want to go and you don't there's nothing worse than walking in a, a, a dressing room that's just got beat I tell you that much and so when you do have to do it you don't want to keep repeating that feeling um, of course you want to be jumping up and down and winning things but you've got to earn the right to do that and you've got to stop the silliness and you've got to stop making mistakes. They all seem to believe in one another, though, John. Is that of course, of course. Otherwise, they wouldn't might be. Not been the case previous years, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, well, that's what I say to you. It took us, you know, it, it moved us up two divisions when we was at Bournemouth. It's no different, because as I said to you, you get the players on your. It's all about them out there. You could be the best, worst coach, best manager, worst manager. If the players are turning it in on you. You got no chance. And we haven't, you know, we got, that's why I'd like to think that the lads we walk in, uh, bought in, would improve us. No matter who you bring in. They've got to be better than what we've got. It's no good bringing players that are the same. They've got to be better. Obviously, they're going to get better as well, aren't they? With experience. Exactly. Some of the younger players. We, exactly. We've seen them play well now. Yeah. I mean, next season, they could be even better and we could really be... Uh, Pushing next season. You well, know? that's what I say, you know, and I well, think. When the rest of this season as well. My, my uh, me and Erdan was discussing it, and I think any club this year, any club, just to make sure that you survive is is, is an yeah, achievement. That's right. Get to 50 and, and kick on, see where you go from there. Obviously, the cup run has helped us, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you know, beating Torquay and then Wimbledon, uh, a big event for the club, regardless of it's the biggest game in the club's history, it's a big event for the general well-being of the club isn't it like, yeah, like I heard him says well that's what I say and I think with it it's not just getting your 50 points this season I think there's a bit could be a lot of clubs that are financially could possibly go to the wall there's a lot of clubs mm. that financially won't get supporters in there might not be able to get their payers paid and all that they're the things that I'm talking about survival it's hard enough when you've got fans coming yeah. in but when you ain't got none of that you'd hate to think that you're seeing clubs go out the window because something that's out of everybody's control. Yep, exactly. And, and we did have 1,300, well, just under, about 1,300 fans back for, for this game here against Bradford. Were we a little bit unlucky that Bradford had sacked their manager? Because they, they seemed to, it looked as me, that they were, they were really grafting and it, it read a hell of a lot to them to try and get a point here the other night. I'll tell you what, after that performance, it's lucky that I never got the sack, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, 
No, listen, what I think what happened to Bradford, you're, you're forgetting who you're talking about. It's Bradford Football Club, a massive club, with a big budget, all the things. They've got organised, they've got a new... A bit like, I'll tell you what I described that game was, the, the, our first game, me and Lee, when we went to Stevenage. Yeah, we yeah. went there and dug in and dug in and got a point. Should have won it, sh could have won it. But it was so <coughs> pleasing just to get that point. It kicks you on. What did Bradford then go and do the next week? They went and beat Cambridge. Mm. So it's give them a platform. So maybe they might start moving on. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I, unfortunately, we was the ones that copped it all. But you still take a point. You keep getting your points. They all mount up at the end. And then obviously uh, Saturday just gone. We, we, we go to Leighton Orient and, and get all three points there in, in a good win away from home. Yeah, and I'll never see three of them. They're, when they <laughs> scored, I've got to be truthful, indoors, when I see Orient score, um, it's a bit of a standing joke, even though it's not supposed to be, but the uh, remote control got thrown. Because <laughs> I couldn't believe how we conceded. But listen, the boys, once again, they stuck at it and win 2-1. Mm. I think the, the gaffers made a really good point in the sense of survival for this year. I mean, knowing how football is and without fans it's affecting a lot of clubs with the crisis package that's still being discussed the second and third part obviously um, we have to be grateful ever thankful for the hand that we've got at the moment because we're on the cusp and hopefully not temp tempting fate but there's a few things a few variables that are playing in our way and playing to our strengths and it can change the fortunes of this football club massively so it's um for me personally it's a massive thank you to everyone here and that's not here the players and everyone for doing what they've done because it's them, you know, and it's to bring it to this point and we've got this chance. I've never experienced a chance like this in my life, you know, and uh, if we can make, you know, if we can see it through over the line, then, you know, I, I, I think I'll be one of the most happiest people in the world. I'm not going to lie. But even getting this close to having this type of chance, you know, for this football club, it means the world because, you know, when you spent five years here, you, and you, you, you know, there's been a lot of moments you doubt yourself and you ask, you know, what, what, where's it gone wrong? And now to be in this position we are, I mean, personally, I thank John a lot because I say this all the time and I say it publicly, I say it to whoever asks me, is someone who's shown me the most respect I've ever experienced. And I've, and I, he's got that back, but he's someone that I've actually, as a football person, he's embraced everything and learned, like, learned with him. I've learned a lot. And it's been good, whereas before there's always divisions and this, this, this it's been a united front. So I, I just underline, I just want to say thank you to everyone, especially the gaffer. And long may it continue and hopefully we can crack on and turn this right around. Yeah, the thing is what we've got to realise as well, um, we ain't started, we've only just started, we ain't done nothing yet on the football side. We've got a long, long way to go, but we've turned the corner and pushing it the right way. Uh, and with the fan support and with everybody behind it, let's just hope we can kick it on. You got all jokes aside, we've got a decent pitch to play on there, so there's no excuses about that. You never hear me moaning about a pitch. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's lucky. Uh, until, until after Christmas. Um, but no, you know, with the Brighton games going on, with everything else going on, there's a lot of good people, especially signing Mark as well, who, who you know, let's put this one to rest. It's not a favour. It's not anything else. Mark's been bought here for his experience. We was desperate for left uh, cover on the left side. As it proved when Doc went out, we've had to try different things. Nick's come in, done well. We've had to play a sweeper system uh, or three at the back, which I don't really like, I've got to be honest, just to suit the team that we've got. Do you moan about it? No. You work with the players you've got available. That's called cool. going to work. Does a bricklayer moan that if he's a mint mixer breaks? No. He's still got to get to work, hasn't he? It's the same difference. But we're just on the start of it. And let's hope the fans and everybody here get really behind the team. Um, I know people get upset when we lose. No worse than I do. But we don't lose on purpose. And it won't be through lack of effort that we don't take the football club further. And I was like, well, yeah, I'm just going to say that, obviously, with the team, the building that John and Erdem have done, but during this pandemic, the work that's gone on behind the scenes, Tom, Massively. Ben, Massively. to get this club back, Tom. To be having the fans in, ben. I think it's been fantastic. John. No, I think he deserves a round of applause. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well done, well done, Tom. Take well done. Take well. Yeah. Hey. I mean, I, I get about Still 15 no emails from him a day, yeah. you didn't you? you know, <laughs> this is happening. It's happening. <laughs> We're open here. We're close there, you know, and he's been fantastic, Tom. Yeah, 15, and, and all the staff. From Tom and 20 from Chris. Yeah, and, I think sorry, we've got to mention Claire as well. All, yeah, and Claire and all the staff downstairs have done fantastic during this pandemic to get this club where it is.
No, well, that's, right. I think I, yeah. I agree with that. And this is what I'm saying to you. It's not the, the, the shop window every Saturday is your pitch. Yeah. Everybody pays to watch that. They don't pay to see whether you've got the nicest pictures. No. Or the best carpet or this, that, and the other. Of course, that helps and that attracts people. But it, they pay to watch that. And there's more work goes behind getting that, as Tom and Claire and we've all done in the summer, um, except when we was on furlough. Um, we all, you know, everybody worked hard in the summer to get things going and get players in and all that. And it is a club now. It's a club. Yeah. It's Crawley Football Club. It's not Johnny M's United. It's not East End Ball Reserves. It's <laughs> Crawley Town <laughs> Football Club. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to go around the table very swiftly and, and ask and ask what um, everyone's highlight of 2020. Well, footballing wise the end Ken. well 2020 for me it's got to be talky I mean yeah. to win 6-5 right, in Ken, them circumstances you were there brilliant yeah, <laughs> and, and, oh yeah, yeah. And, and I was there and Tom was down the hospital but that's another story <laughs> isn't it you know but no it was I think talky is definitely the highlight of my season I imagine probably that would be the footballing highlight for everyone other than talky try and think it's anything different Ben will put you on the well, spot apart from Uno on away trips yeah <laughs> um, stand those <laughs> yeah, I think I Wimbledon think, I think it's just having a, it's having a club and having a, a job and obviously I run complete turf care, but it's having a business and healthy and to come through that. But highlights got to be talky, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Tom. Yeah, well, I'm just glad you're there to You've got one, it, one that you were there for, Tom? Uh, one that I was there for, um, maybe a bit cliche, but I think the fans coming back was a good moment. Yeah. Even like the whole day, that, that was quite enjoyable. Obviously on a personal level, a lot of work's gone into that, as has, you know, club wide, but... You know, just little things from that day, like when the boys ran out to warm up and like the round of applause that went round, like just everything about it was yeah, yeah, quite emotional actually. I think having great, fans back great in, atmosphere, wasn't it? In the great stadium, that they've been back for obviously the two games, the the game on Boxing Day. Hopefully, it, it can continue. But I mean, cheers, Boris. Yeah, um, we'll <laughs> see. A footballing higher. I think Wimbledon away was massive for me. Yeah, I mean, personally, just purely because it was the first time we hit the third round in our time mm. here, and it set up the leads, which. You know, in a selfish view, you look at the books and you're thinking, oh, things are changing in a very positive manner, which, you know, you always theoretically say, yep, you can fear it can happen, in theory it can happen. And when it that does happen, it's a massive boost uh, to the club, to everyone here. And, you know, when you're, and at the end of the day, it's a massive testament to the chairman who's ploughed in so much money to the football club in the time that suddenly he sees everything that you've been banging on about every year going, look, in theory, this can happen, this can happen, and it never happens. And then suddenly it happens. It's, it's it's a massive boost for everyone. And the fact that it was Wimbledon, you know, there's a rivalry, I understand. So, you know, that that's nice. And just getting it at at Plough Lane, it was it was a very beautiful moment for me. And the way the goals were scored as well, you know, the netters and chips yeah, was good. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It was a special day. I, I and it I, meant that everyone forgot about the Torquay game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really enjoyed the uh, the last minute equaliser against Plymouth. Well, it doesn't stand out as a particularly big game, but I can remember that. We, I think we, we, it was we were dead and buried. It felt like I mean, the game was over. I, mean, I remember us three. Oh, I went a bit over the top. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Like everyone around us. Remember where you are? Oh yeah, sorry. I think that's what we call a good Russell, Nick Ken. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but I mean, every every lower league team, whether it be non-league, League One, League Two, when they go into FA Cup matches, that is the dream, isn't it? They get to the round three and enjoy a Premier League club. Um, I mean, that is the dream every club aspires to, isn't it? it as far as the FA Cup's concerned, in our sort of level of football. And uh, John, have you got, got a highlight? Uh, no, not really. Spending I, I every day is he not being here today, John? <laughs> yeah. I, I just think, uh, on a football sense, it's good to see players that people have doubted, uh, which I could list about six of them at the moment, and they're all playing in the first team at the minute, doing well. Just proving doubt is wrong. I think we all do that. A lot of us do that through your lives anyway. But it's just having that bit of faith in somebody. You're seeing that being rewarded, whether it's clearing a ball off a line or scoring a goal. Um, I'm trying to think. Really, really, I can't think of a football I like. They're all, every time you win's an I like to me. Yeah. Every time you come off that pitch and we've won and the other team haven't. Low points of the year, without shadow of that, Exeter for me. But you don't live on the low points, but you've got to learn from them. Yeah. We are, hopefully we have... I've learned not to um, talk about the uh, people in the stands that are not supporters. 
invisible supporters that I didn't even know was there that you were talking about. And all those monkeys as well. There you, you know? go. Yeah, <laughs> well, give them monkeys. <laughs> we, uh, we hope you've enjoyed watching the Reds throughout 2020. If you don't, we don't really give them monkeys. Um, but <laughs> no, no, of course we don't. We're really great to have fans back. We're looking forward to 2021, getting the people back in, in the stands. You know, can you go off the test, guys? Yeah. <laughs> I just want to wish everyone a happy Christmas, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a tester here, aren't I? Oh, no. <laughs> this is my highlight of 2020. <laughs> Where's this plastic? My highlight is watching Ken thinking yeah, he's got a really good <laughs> pan in his head. And oh, he can't yeah. get so oh, up. Oh, look at that. Ken! <laughs> God, so that's what he's calling body, isn't it? Is that a Raya? What? It's the only time I have seen Father Christmas. Merry Christmas! And on that, don't forget to say you will. Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Come on, come on! It's the, only, it's the only time in, since my football career that I've ever seen Father Christmas a little bit showing off now. his tattoos. <laughs> Christmas! <laughs> Ben's like, Ben's Ben's doesn't know what to think. Ben. Ken, show me that one. Is it Rudolph? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> it's his hat making the, Look at his hat. Get in there! Come on! subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit that bell icon so you can be notified about when we are next live here from Talk of the Town. Make sure you don't ever miss an episode, subscribe, hit the bell and we will see you again very soon. Since 2017, £30 million has been lost to pension scammers. That's about 26,000 Premier League season tickets. During these uncertain times, it's more important than ever to defend your hard-earned money. Be on the ball to anyone contacting you out of the blue. Find out more about pension scams and how to avoid them by visiting our website.